Good evening and welcome to Rushi High School, where we have SCAL basketball for you this evening in the Claire C. DeVoe Gymnasium. A game tonight for the Fort Army Lady Redskins and Carlos Siegel's team at 18-1, 11-0 in conference play. And they are here to play the Rushi Raiders. Paul Birmingham's team is 17-4 and 9-2. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play -play this evening. We have an SCAL matchup that has kind of an interesting twist to it. Fort Laramie has already won the conference. This was the sixth consecutive SCL championship for them. They had the previous four have been undefeated seasons, and if they win this evening, they will have gone five consecutive SCL campaigns without a loss. But it is also senior night here at Rushi. Coach Paul Bremingen, whose team has had multiple injuries this year, will try to go through as the game progresses. And they will have eight seniors on their roster. We're going to go through their starting lineup. Number three is C.C. Borshers, a good uh, all-around player. 13 points a game, 5.3 rebounds, two assists, and two steals per game. Number 10, Kel Kelby Dosick, 5'10", senior, 3.1 points per game. 13 is Kate Sherman, 6'1", senior, at 9 points per game. 14 is Reese Gubo, 5'6", senior, 8.1 points per game for her. And number 20 is Jayla Shappy. She is a 5'5", junior, averaging 2.1 points per game. For Fort Army, they have just one senior in their starting lineup, and that is their do-everything player, number 11, Ava Turner. 5'8", senior at 10.8 points per game, 4.2 rebounds, and three steals for her. Number 21, Victoria Mesher, six-foot sophomore, 7.9 points per game, 4.3 rebounds. Number 22 is Skylar Albers, 5'10", junior, 7.6 points per game. Number 30, Jaden Rose, a 5'5", junior at 2.2 points per game. And number 40 is Avery Brandewey, a 5'10", sophomore, 11.9 points per game and 7.7 .7 rebounds. Coach running his team, they averaged 50.8 points per game on the season. Fort Army, they averaged 51.5 offensively and is typical for a Carter Siegel team. Very solid defensively, giving up just 28 points per game. Our officials this evening, Christopher Estes, Tony Sweeterman, and A.J. Kremer. That gives you everything we need to know prior to get this thing on the road. The opening tip-off will come up right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Rushi High School, where we've got our scoreboard is presented by Reese, Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. For our Army Redskins, come out tonight in our black uniforms, red trim, a little bit of white on it as well, and in the home, home standing, Rushi Raiders in white with blue numerals and blue trim. Christopher Estes will toss the basketball, and we will have Avery Brandwee jumping center with Kate Sherman. Ball's banged into the backcourt. It ends up into the hands of C.C. Borchers. This is Reese Goubeau to the rim. Her shot doesn't go. Sherman battles for the rebound, but it comes into the hands of Jayla Shappy, and we're going to get a held ball, and we'll take it the other way. Rushi Raiders with a uh, size advantage this evening, and they're coming out with some full-court pressure. This is Brandewee with the basketball. Into the corner it goes. This is Albers. Skyler Albers back on top to Jaden Rose. Man-to-man -man defense, and we're going to get a blocking foul. This foul will go against Jayla Shappy, her first, team's first. A contact out front. And 26 seconds into this one, we get our first foul. This is Jaden Rose. On the wing now, Skyler Albers, three ball. Skyler Albers splashes a three. Her 17th of the season. An early lead to the Fort Laramie Redskins. This is Sherman. Ball gets swung around to Borchers. On top, here will be a three ball that will go up from Shappy. Her fifth three of the year. And we're tied at three. Out in transition, go to Redskins. We're going to get blocked by Sherman. Fought, fought back up. That one also missed, and the rebound comes to Kelby Dosick. Lob pass Sherman inside. She powers up, left it a little bit short under pressure, gets her own rebound, and that one will bounce in for Kate Sherman. 5-2 on the Reese Meyer and Company CPA scoreboard. Head to the rim was Turner. She kicks it back out front, another three. That one will also be drained by Skyler Albers. Albers. 
minute and a half into this one, and we've got some firepower going already. Here's a trap on the sideline, and the ball is tipped out of bounds on a hustle play by Brandoe. Doubled up the wing pass. Inbounding, Shappy to Fortress in the backcourt. Sherman heads to the rim, has to kick it back out. Nice bounce pass, and the ball was passed from Reese Goubeau inside to Sherman. Sherman's going to get a couple of free throw opportunities as the foul goes to Avery Brandewey, her first team's first. Sherman's a 63% free throw shooter on the season, averaging nine points per game. High arching shot, and it's three, uh, it's three for her. And we're tied at six. Splashed them both. There's a man pressure. Rose takes it all the way inside. Brandewey trying to work against Sherman. Her shot's blocked. Rebound, Borchers headed the other way. Gets cut off by Albers and we will reset. This is Gubo. Wing pass, Shappy. Gubo working. Tried to get a backdoor cut from Dosik. Here's a three that'll go up. That rattles around, and the rebound comes in the hands of Victoria Mesher, headed the other way. Here's a pass ahead. And off glass and finishing. Skylar Albers, all eight points for her in the opening quarter. Averages 7.6 per game. She's got eight already, and we're going to get a foul in the trap. Foul will be assessed to Skyler Albers, her first. We're going to get our first sub in the game. This will be number 12, Carissa Meyer, 5'9", junior, averaging 3.7 points per game. Inbound from Shappy looks. Looks and finally throws it inbounds as she finds Dosik. And Gubo comes and gets the handoff. Wing pass Borchers. Here's Sherman on top. Borchers gets a look at three. It's blocked. Albert's got a block on it. Sherman fights that one up through traffic. And the rebound to Brandewey. Pass ahead, Albers, and that one she does it again. Sherman swoops in to grab the rebound. Off the other way we go. And that ball will be saved, however, on the sideline by Borchers, and who hit it? It will go out of bounds off of Skyler Albers. Second sub in the basketball game will be Summer Hoying. She wears number 41. She's a 5'11 junior. Also in the game will be number 21. Mesher's back in the game, and number four, Ronnie Poling will step in. She's a six-foot junior for Rushi Raiders. Pretty fast paced, and each team subbing a lot early. Coach Bremigan calls a set. Borcher is on the wing. Sherman gets the back cut. Here's the pass up on top. The three ball is going to go up from Shappy. It's short, and Sherman tried to save it, but it already hit on the end line. This is Summer Hoying to inbound. She entered the ball game just a moment ago. Ava Turner will bring the basketball up the court. There's a trap on the wing. And tried to bounce it off the leg of Sherman and her teammate. Sherman had grabbed a hold of the basketball. The coach immediately called timeout. We're going to get a timeout also. You're watching high school basketball, WSN. Come free throws already in the basketball game. Our free throw slider sponsored by White Stakes University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or a bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. First time out of the game, Coach Birmingham called that one. His team was scrapping for a loose ball and held ball situation coming. Here's a 1-3-1 trap. 
And throw it across court to Albers, and she traveled. She wanted to throw it cross court to Victoria Mesher and just couldn't quite get the ball out of her hands, and she gets called for the travel. Good heads up play on the 1-3-1 trap as she stole the pass from Reese Goubeau. Here's Shappy to inbound, and she will find Goubeau. On top of the 1-3-1 is Victoria Mesher. Goubeau to the corner. Borsher's with it this time. Shappy on top. There's a deep three. That will splash. Long three ball that will go for Reese Goubeau, her 40th of the year here in game number 22. Raiders on top by two. Skip pass. Albers. She has all the points. That one's going to go up. That one bounces around. The rebound, however, was secured by Meyer, and she lost it. There's a long pass ahead. It's going to go out of bounds as she tried to throw it over Poling's head. Back in, Rose and Brandewee. Also back in, Kelby Dosick. And for the first time, Addison Chappie, a 5-5 sophomore. As each team has gone seven deep here in just four and a half minutes of the opening quarter. Mesher, cross court, pass inside. Brandon, we missed that one, it's tipped outside and the 50-50 ball goes to Fort Army. Mesher to set things up. Under good pressure, she finally gets the ball in the hands of Jaden Rose. Cross court pass, this shot's gonna go up for Meyer. Carissa Meyer splashes in her eighth three ball of the year. Pass inside, working hard, shot goes up and rolls off, however, by polling. And what do we get? We're gonna get a held ball call that will stay at this end of the floor. And Poling's gonna come out, she's got blood on her hand, that'll bring Sherman back in the game. That looked like an ugly fingernail getting ripped. A very quick look at that, and one would assume she'll get taped up and back in the game. Here's Addison Shappy to inbound to basketball. Here's Goubeau, pass inside, and that shot's blocked by Brandewee. Kelby Dosick at 5'10", tried to take it up in the 5'10". Brandewee knocked it out of bounds. Lob inside, Sherman goes up and gets it. Under pressure, she missed the shot, but scrambled into her own rebound. But brought it down and you're gonna get a held ball that will go with the Redskins this time. Of course, everybody in the SCL plays each other twice. This was a very good basketball game when it was played at Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie eventually won by 13, but they had to outscore Rushi by 10 in the fourth quarter to do so. Brandewee works inside, has to kick it back out. In the battle for the rebound, it will go off the hands of CC Borchers. Ava Turner back in the game, as is Skylar Albers. And uh, Jayla Shappy is in as well. Six minutes into this one. Turner on top. Off a couple screams come Albers. Eight in the opening quarter for Skyler. Brandewee. Albers for three again. Brandewee rebounded at first, and then it went out of bounds off of Sherman. Reese Myring scoreboard, 11-10 in favor of the Fort Laramie Redskins. Skyler Albers eventually gets it on top to Jaden Rose. Albers, quick pass across, Hoing, Summer Hoing's shot is short. <laughs> Sherman was battling with Brandewee and Sherman grabbed it when she was out of bounds. No, it was not, it was off of Hoing. 
will go the other way. Borchers back into the game. Carissa Meyer into the game. Victoria Mesher into the game. Here's the trap that comes. Got a hand on it. Here's Mesher. She goes cross court, finds Turner. Here's a shot by Albers. It banks in. Skyler Albers with a 10 point opening quarter. Here's the trap coming again. Borchers looks. Finally finds her teammate, Shappy Addison. The coach has to take a timeout with 59 seconds to go here in the opening quarter as he saw another turnover coming from that 1-3-1 trap, which has been exceptionally aggressive here in the opening quarter. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Rushi Raiders have taken a couple of timeouts here already in the opening quarter. While we were having that timeout, Jenny York, and who wears number 32 for Rushi, a 5'8 senior, checked into the basketball game. And you can see Coach talking about his uh, attacking that trap that we saw just a moment ago. Each of these teams uh, into tournament play before Fort Laramie can get there. They have a big game on Saturday. Uh, they are at home. And they will play Liberty Benton at home, who was uh, just a single loss on the season, coming into a Blanchard Valley Conference game tonight. And we will be in Fort Laramie to bring you that game that will air on Sunday. 59 seconds to go, opening quarter. Back to a traditional 1-2-2 zone. Skip pass that's tipped out of bounds by Turner. We'll give you tournament action for both of these schools before we get too far into the telecast this evening. Reese Gubo on top. Little matchup zone situation. Flattens out to a 2-3 to a right now. Here's a three that's going to go up from Borchers. Sherman rebounds and fights it back up, but had a chance for a three-point play, but it rattled out on her. But she will still get a pair of free throws. A couple of Wright State Lake Campus free throws. The foul was assessed too. Well, they did not put it up on the board. Here's Sherman's free throws. She is three for three at the line today. The foul went to number 21, which is Victoria Mesher. The third different Redskin have a foul, and that one will bounce in also. Six opening quarter points. For senior Kate Sherman. See if Fort Army with a one point lead goes for the last shot of the quarter. Here's a trap out front. Albers, skip pass, knocked out of bounds, hover by Gubo. This is Jaden Rose to inbounds, throws it over the head of Turner. Mesher was trying to get loose inside and could not. Has to throw it back out on top to Rose. And Rose being pressured. This is Turner. Clock's running down. Three ball, short. And a couple of different people wearing black jerseys went for the basketball. There was a white jersey in there as well. We're going to get a foul. Who does it go against? The foul goes to against C.C. Borscher, C.C.'s first, team's second. Summer Hoying enters. It will be baseline out of bounds. Look for which Redskins going to take it out. Looks like it's going to be Jaden Rose. Pass. Albert's going to get another three look. That one's a little bit long. Opening quarter. That's a good one. Fort Lombie 13, Rushi 12. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
my scoreboard presented by Reese Myrie and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Shot here at Claire C. Navo Gymnasium in the opening quarter. Fort Army with 13, Rushi with 12. Skyler Albers has 10 points. Carissa Meyer has a three point field goal for their 13. Kate Sherman has six. And Reese Gubo and Jayla Shappy each have a three ball for the 12 for the Rushi Raiders. And it will be Rushi basketball to start quarter number two. Borchers in the backcourt to Gabo. They've gone man to man this time, have the Redskins. Borchers looks inside. This passes on top to Poling. And then to the wing to Shappy, and we're going to get what? A hold. Sherman was trying to get open inside. She was held by Avery Brandewey. That's Avery becomes the first player in the game with two fouls. Her team has four here in the opening half. Jayla Shappy, the inbounder. Sherman rolls in the lane, gets the high pass. Bounce pass back inside. That was a well done play and Poling missed a shot. Sherman got the rebound, goes back up and she will be fouled. It's been a very active Kate Sherman here in the opening half. And Skyler Albers becomes the second Fort Lauderdale Redskin to have a pair of fouls. Sherman to the free throw line. She averages nine points in the game, had six in the opening quarter. She's a perfect five for five. Albers going to have to take a seat and be replaced by Carissa Meyer, who has a three ball in the opening quarter. Sherman dead centers both of those. Point seven and eight for her, and her team takes a one-point lead. Brandewey against pressure. And she finally gets it loose to Mesher. Mesher passes inside. It's caught by Turner. That shot's missed under pressure. Scramble for the rebound. Poling gets it. Here comes Gubo the other way. And now Shappy trapped. She finds Gubo. Sherman lobs inside to Poling, and her five big shot inside will go. High low action. Poling gets her opening basket. Three point lead in favor of the Raiders. Timeout for Army. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Kate Sherman has made all six of her free throws today, and our free throws tonight are sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Four opening points here in quarter number two for the Arushi Raiders. They've taken a three-point lead, hence the timeout by Carla Siegel, her first. She will have Avery Brandewey take the basketball out of bounds. Jaden Rose with the basketball, working against Shappy. And now Brandewey on top, who's trapped. Turner. Rose. Mesher pass inside Turner, short shot by Ava Turner goes in. That's her first basket of the evening. She averages about 11 a game. Cuts the lead to one. Gubo finds Borchers. This is Sherman. Here comes Gubo off a pair of screens. Borchers looks inside to Sherman. He can't get it there with Mesher's pressure. And they reset. Polling, lob pass inside, Sherman, that high-low is blocked. Carissa Meyer gets the rebound. Redskins with a chance to take the lead. Mesher, Meyer on top, now on a wing pass. Here's a bounce pass inside, it's stolen by Borchers, and we get a held ball as she got down on the floor with Mesher, 
And the ball will stay with Fort Laramie. Randui on top. And Rose sets the offense with a call from Coach Siegel. Here's a lob pass inside Mesher and stolen under pressure. And we're going to get a foul or what do we have? We're going to get a foul. That will go against. Number 21, that's Victoria Mesher. She has two fouls now, joining teammates Albers and Brandewee with two. Comes number 23, Alex Rose into the game. Alex is a 5'9 junior. She's in for the first time for the Redskins. Borchers. Nope, that's not Borchers, that's Goubeau, my mistake. Scubo for three, a little hard. Brandewee rips the rebound around and had to because she's fouled. Foul is 14 white, which is Reese Scubo, her first team's third. Six Redskins fouls in the basketball game, which means the next one will be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the Redskins. All the scoreboard says just five. I think they missed one getting marked up. Here's a steal. Headed the other way, Addison Shappy under pressure. She gets a layup that's pressured and she missed it. And then it will go to Fort Laramie. Good hustle back by the Redskins to contest that layup. Jade Rose. Rose works inside, can't get to the lane. Brandon, we will get a shot in the lane that's hard. And Poling, who's had a really nice basketball game so far, swoops in and grabs that one. Kubo under pressure. Borchers has to just throw it in bounds because she is fouled. Foul goes against Ava Turner. Ava's first, and let's see, it is one and one. Scoreboard was incorrect. And to the free throw line will go CC Borchers, a 68% free throw shooter on the season. Free throw sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. First free throw good. That's Borcher's first point tonight. She averages 13 a game. Here comes Kate Sherman back into the game. Kate's had a nice basketball game as well with eight points. Borcher's again. And same result. The lead goes back to three. Mesher looks, looks, and... Finally gets rid of it. This is Brandewee and Mesher has to come and get it again. Turner. And Brandewee. This is Alex Rose. And she will be fouled as she heads to the rim. Foul went to. Reese Goubeau, Reese has a pair of fouls now into the free throw line will go Alex Rose, 60% free throw shooter on the season. Free throw shooting's been good by both teams this evening. Here comes Albers back in the game. She has a pair of fouls. Also back into the game is Jayla Shappy. Alex Rose is a 5'9", a junior. She averaged just under three points per game. And she has two this evening on those free throws. And after a good effort, she's going to be replaced by Jaden Rose. Borchers. Polling, looking inside. They've been going high-low a lot today. Chappie wins, swings it around to Borchers. She's lob inside to Polling. And she will go up and traveled first. 
It looked like it from here. She had the ball fake to get uh, the defender up in the air and create space to score. I think she shuffled the feet inside as she did so. Looked like a pretty good call from here. Comes some full court pressure. Rushi clinging to a one point lead. Victoria Mesher. Playing bump and run with Borchers. Cross court pass. Here's a three that's going to go up. That's long. But on the putback, basket Avery Brand, oh, excuse me, Summer Hoeing on the putback. Redskins back on top by a point. Sherman. Chappie, look around. And Rebound, pulling again, fights that one back up and will draw a foul. Ronnie Pulling's had a nice basketball game. Should get a couple of free throw opportunities. Let's see what the foul went before we assess it to someone. I thought it was number 11, Ava Turner. Let's see. Here's Pulling. The first free throw missed by either team this evening. They never did put the foul on the board. I thought Ava Turner was in the vicinity. I have to check that out at halftime. A little bit of a hard bounce. Sherman rebounds. Offensive rebound. Kate works if muscles up. That's a little hard. Pulling fights that one up. Boy, they've been on the glass hard here in the last couple of minutes, have the Rushi Raiders. Pulling back to the free throw line. And again, we did not get the foul call on the board. That one rolls out, spins out. Nine team fouls here in the opening half for the Redskins. There's a that one is good as Poling has a Wright State University late campus free throw. Ava Turner does have two fouls. We'll have to check and see who the other one just went to right a moment ago. Tied at 19, Mesher advances the basketball and under pressure has to throw it out on top to Rose. Rose out front with Chappie, and they're going at it, as everybody has this evening. Mesher back on top, Rose. This is Brandewee. Coach Siegel just called a set. Let's see what she gets out of this possession. And she called a second set. Rushi fans happy with the way their teams defended this possession. Rose on top. Meyer on the wing. Bounce pass inside. Mesher works. Turnaround jumpers a little bit long. Meyer rebound and Mesher swoops in for the rebound. That one missed. Sherman battles for the rebound. It goes to Meyer and Carissa Meyer will draw a foul. So this time, it's the Fort Lauderdale Lady Redskins pounding the glass. Foul goes to Jayla Shappy, her second. Meyer shoots 53% from the free throw line and splashed that one down. Five team fouls in the half for the Redskins, nine for, excuse me, for the Raiders, nine for the front line of Redskins. Sherman rips that rebound away. We're headed the other way. Borcher's in a hurry. Gubo gets a three look in transition. It rolls long. Sherman gets the rebound. That one's a tough shot from a tough angle. Brandewey rebounds. Her team's up a point. Brandewey the length of the floor and scores. Avery Brandewey's first basket of the game is a 94-foot assault on the rim. Her team leads by three. 
As we approach a minute to go in the opening half. Steele, headed to the rim, Meyer. Carissa Meyer puts her team up five. That's the name, number of points that she had. She has six in the basketball game. Gubo pass, Shappy works inside. Gubo works the lane, little runner goes hard. Mesher heads the other way, plenty of time. And give and go, what do we got? We're gonna get an offensive foul. Avery Brandaway picked up offense, or for her first, third team foul, or her third personal foul. On the offensive foul, and possession of the basketball will go back to Rushi. And they need to withstand the run here. Good last couple of minutes for Fort Army. They're going to go zone. They're going to play a little 1 2 2. Borchers looks. Gubo's on top. Sherman heads baseline, spins into the lane. Her shot's blocked. The rebound initially went to Dosick, and then she threw it to a, t to a black shirt because she couldn't find a teammate open. Time for Fort Larmer to get a shot at the buzzer. Steal. This is Addison Shappy headed to the rim, and she will score. Let's see if it counts. Did she get it off before the buzzer? Let's see what the count score is. The basket counts. The foul will go against uh, Alex Rose. So Addison Shappy has a basket, an opportunity for a three-point play with time expired. And, oh, it goes in and out. It's been a great first half. The Fort Army Lady Redskins will take a three-point lead for the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Claire C. DeVoe Gymnasium. Sponsored by Reese Meyer and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. I'm Mark Schein. It's my pleasure to bring this game to you. Quarter scores go like this. Fort Army quarter scores of 13 and 11 for their 24 points. They are led by Skylar Albers, who had 10 all in the first quarter. Six from Carissa Meyer, and three other four other players have two points. For the Rushi Raiders, they had quarter scores of 12 and 9 for their 21 points in the basketball game. They are led by Kate Sherman with eight. They have a, three players with three and two other players who have two points apiece. One of the reasons the basketball game is close, Fort Army three of four at the free throw line, while the Rushi Raiders are nine of 13. Something to look for here in the second half because Avery, Avery Brandaway, the talented 5'10 sophomore for Fort Army, has just a two points and has a three fouls, and three of her teammates have two fouls as well. Two fouls for Reese Gubo, two uh, also for Jayla Shappy, and there were only five team fouls in the opening half called against the Rushi Raiders. It will be Raider basketball as we start the second half. Starting lineups on the floor for both teams. Borchers, Dosick, Sherman, Gubo, and Shappy. And on the other side, Turner, Mesher, Albers, Rose, and Brandewee for the Redskins. Fort Army trying to go undefeated in the conference for the fifth consecutive year. Dosick has to kick it back out. Baseline jumper will go. Basket will go to Reese Gubo, the first basket of the second half. Her team's back within a point. Reese Gubo has five points in the game. Average is a little over eight. Albers, she had a very hot first quarter with a pair of threes and another couple of baskets for 10 points. Here's a skip pass around Rose. Patient possession for the black and red. Pressured out front, pass goes to the wing, Turner. Here's Albers for jumper in the lane, and Sherman will knock it out of bounds. Told you that uh, Fort Army has another game on Saturday with Liberty Benton, then they finish up on the seventh, they go to Marion Local. That will be a great game as well, the 18-2, 8-0 in the MAC Marion Local team. 
They're playing cold water as we speak. We'll talk about some tournament action too if we get a chance in this game as both teams had their draw last Sunday. Pressured out front, Mesher and Borchers. Here's a wing pass that goes to Rose. And what? Hold. White 20. That means that Jayla Shappy becomes the first Rushi Raider to pick up three fouls in the game. And that immediately pops up Addison Shappy off the bench. Her bucket at the end of the half cut the lead to three. Kind of stem some momentum that the Redskins had at that particular point in time. Ball's loose. That shot's blocked. Borcher's got a hand on it. And Dosa gets it in the corner. Here comes Gubo trying to beat the pressure. And there's a three out of the corner. Rebound on the backside by Shappy. And we're going to get a foul. That Dosik was grabbed on the sideline over there. Who did the foul go to? And. Well, there isn't a 10 on the floor, and that's who he signaled. So that's what the 40. All right. Foul went to Avery Brandaway, and that is not good if you're a Redskin fan because that is her fourth. And immediately, Carissa Meyer enters the basketball game. Gubo. And Gubo is grabbed out front by Jaden Rose. Jaden's first foul. And they will inbound it again. Two quick team fouls. And then the buzzer goes after the ball had been placed in the disposal of Addison Shappy on the sideline. So with that, Alex Rose are not allowed to enter the basketball game. And we reset. Meyer steals. Turner, jumper. Hits the front of the rim, but she will get to go to the free throw line. Plays ragged here in this quarter. Cece Borchers picks up her second foul. Here's Ava Turner at the free throw line where she is a 63% free throw shooter. Averages 10.8 points per game on the season. Has two tonight and now three. Dead ball allows Alex Rose to enter the basketball game. She replaces Jaden Rose. Here's Ava Turner again. The lone starter as a senior. All the officials in the crowd hollering, we want to get Ronnie Poling into the game. And they were able to buzz her in before the ball was inbounded on the baseline. Here's the 1-2-2 with two, two. a couple point lead. Actually, it's a three point lead. They finally got it up on the scoreboard. Gubo looks inside. Borchers wanted a three, but got covered up. Here's Gubo for three. She gets her own rebound, puts it up off the glass a little hard, gets another rebound. That one's blocked from behind. Fort Laramie on a run out. Albers with a catch and a score. That was a difficult play. Her first basket since the opening quarter. And the lead goes to five. Borchers gets inside. That's blocked out of bounds by Mesher. Free throws this evening. Sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. There's Borchers. Skip pass to the corner, stolen by Albers. Mesher looked like she had a lane to the hoop, took the pull up jumper instead, and Kate Sherman rebounds. And as she does so, somebody climbed her back. Let's see, it will be. Victoria Mesher, and now Victoria Mesher has three fouls. Talk about our free throws this evening. They are sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Been much flow to this quarter with the Aggressive defense and the fouls. Here's a trap on the sideline. Gubo heads baseline. Her pass is tipped loose into the backcourt where Borchers goes and gets it. Yeah. 
Dubow looks inside, polling. She works and works and goes up. Sherman rebounds, but it's tipped out of bounds. To, no, it wasn't out of bounds. Carissa Meyer tipped it to her teammate. Trying to get their biggest lead of the game. And a couple of wild shots inside and a scramble for the ball. That's the way the third quarter's gone. It has been a very aggressive third quarter by both teams as we played three and a half minutes. The ball will stay with the Redskins. Carissa Meyer will do the honors out of bounds. Turner. Meyer gets a three look. That's long. And CeCe Borchers was going for the basketball, and somebody got into her legs. 23 is Alex Rose. Alex is second foul. The scoreboard says three team fouls, and now four and a half. With a five point deficit comes the Rushi Raiders. Sherman catches the ball down low. Really solid defense in that time. Couldn't get loose. Borchers. Sherman really working hard. Now she got it down deep. Let's see what happens here. She works, works, goes up strong. Really solid defensive effort by Summer Hoying. Kept her ground inside. I think the coaches called that walling up and did a really nice job, but then secured the rebound as well. Here's a pass inside to Turner. Her shot's a little bit hard. The rebound comes to Reese Goubeau. Goubeau wanted to get a three look. Here's a long two that will bounce long to Ava Turner and will go the other way. Her shot's a little bit hard, but her teammate rebounds on the back side. That goes Summer Hoying with that rebound. Summer Hoying with a good spell. That puts her team up seven right now. 3.09 to go in the third. Timeout. The Rushi Raiders, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. and WSN are non-profit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make the donation of any size. It's a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Six points on the board here for the Fort Army Redskins in quarter number three. Just two for the Rushi Raiders, hence the seven-point lead that we have on the board right now. And Coach Borgers taking his, Coach Bremigan taking his third timeout. This will be Addison Shappy who inbounds to Reese Goubeau. Reese walks it up the court. Kosick looks inside, Poland catches it deep, and that was a well executed high low. They've done that multiple times this evening. Poling has five in the game. Good timeout. She Raiders come out and score. The coaches always like to do that. This number 43, Bryn Holland entered the game. Stats her with the basketball right there for Fort Laramie. She came in at the last timeout. Turner almost tied up and looking and finally gets it to a teammate. Turner again. Defense is really ratcheted up coming out of that timeout, too. And Borgers gets a steal. One on one the other way. Crossover dribble. And did she lose it out of bounds? Oh, it was blocked out of bounds. Skyler Albert is back in the game. A couple of fouls and 12 points. Ten of those came in the opening quarter. Addison Chappie. The polling. Short jumper for her. She's got back to back baskets. Does Ronnie polling for seven and it cuts the lead down to three. It was seven just a moment ago. 
Pass inside. Point gets bumped a little bit. No call, no travel. Meyer, Carissa looks under pressure, goes inside. Throws it to Albers. Skyler's jumper goes up and hits the back of the rim and falls through. She's got 14 now. Just about double her average. Pushes the lead to five. Gubo, 1-2-2 two, two zone. That ball's tipped loose. Tried to get it, pass it inside. And Summer Hoyings had a really nice quarter. She tipped that one loose. Here's Gubo with a steal. Two on two the other way. Little runner for her. Goes hard off the glass, and she banks it in. Gubo now with seven. Cuts the lead back to three. Bounce pass through the lane, and... A difficult pass that Ava Turner couldn't secure it. The turnover goes to the Rushi Raiders. 48.8 seconds to go here in quarter three. Reese Gubo walking it up. She was really close to the 10 count. Taking her time to get their offense set. Here's a pass inside, Poling working inside again, goes off glass and scores again. Ronnie Poling, the last six points have gone her way for the Rushi Raiders, cuts the lead to one. Roche doubled up, looks, 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 and lost the basketball. Addison Chappie, and she will be fouled then by Skyler Albers. With 12.1 seconds to go, Skyler Albers will pick up foul number three. That brings Alex Rose into the basketball game to take Skyler's place. And with 12.1 seconds to go, the Raiders could take a basket and take a lead to the fourth. Borchers. Off a of screen. Gets a shot up, but going off glass. Pulling, lost the rebound, rips it loose, and we got a held ball. She and Ava Turner were after it. Point nine to go. We're going to try to get Kate Sherman in. I bet they try a lob to her in the middle of the lane here. With point nine to go, there's time to catch and shoot. Bowling working inside, too. There's the lob to Sherman. The shot goes up. And after 24 minutes, the Fort Lauderdale Redskins will take a one-point lead to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Reese Meyerig and Company CPAs, helping small business navigate their financial future. 32 for the Fort Laramie Redskins, 31 for the Rushi Raiders. The Raiders won the quarter 10 to 8. They were led in that quarter. Six points from Ronnie Poling. She's got nine in the game. Kate Sherman's got eight. Seven for Reese Gubo. 14 for Skylar Albers. Six for Carissa Meyer. And we are headed to the fourth quarter of Fort Laramie has already won the SCAL. They're trying to go undefeated in the conference for the fifth consecutive, consecutive year. Turner works the lane. Here's a pass to Meyer on the baseline. And Carissa Meyer opens the scoring in the fourth quarter. She's got eight in the game now. Here's Sherman. Kind of a quiet third quarter for her from the point standpoint. The ball's taken away from her by, looks like Brandewee who's back in the game with four fouls. Mesher. Brandewee and Sherman, 30 feet from the basket. Meyer tried to get baseline and could not. Here's the pass inside, and we're going to get a foul. That will go against CC Borchers. It was a hold, and she has three fouls. Team's third on the scoreboard. Skyler Albers back in the game. Addison Shappy in the game. I bet the senior Borchers is not going to be down very long with those three fouls in a game of this magnitude. Here's a pass out front. Albers goes high to get it. 
And then Mesher. And a little bit of miscommunication. Brandeby wanted to go back cut. Pass went where she had been standing a moment ago, and ball sails out of bounds. It'll be Rushi basketball. Here's Reese Gubo. Sherman Poling's open inside, but they couldn't get it down there. There's the pass down there. Brandeby's Gardner with four fouls. Poling works in the lane, has to give it back up. This is Poling, Sherman working down low as they're trying to high low again. And a good defense again by the Redskins. Patient possession. Trailing by three. Redskins playing solid defense and Rushi has only just two timeouts left, four timeouts left for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Gubo into the lane, 12-footer, splash. Reese Gubo has nine points in the game. The lead's one. Mesher out front. Now Jaden Rose gets it back to Mesher. And whose foot did it go off of? I thought it did. Sherman stepped out on the hedge. The ball bounced off her foot and out of bounds. And as expected, CeCe Borcher's back in the game along with Ava Turner. Top player for each team perhaps back in the game or certainly a key player for each team back in the game. And the way he looks with Sherman right in her face. And ball's tipped out of bounds by Gubo. Five and a half to go. Finally gets it into Jaden Mesher. And then back to Brandewey. Turner on the wing. Just three team fouls in the half. For the Rushi, there's a nice jumper on the baseline. That was Turner who scored that one, and their coach immediately called timeout. Time out for us, too. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Probably going to be a lot of free throws as we finish up this particular basketball game. And our free throws tonight are sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or a bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Second time out for Coach Carla Siegel. Thought perhaps she had done so to get uh, Brandon out of the game with her four fouls and a defensive possession coming up, but Avery is still out there. Here's a move to the goal and shot blocked by Brandon. How about that? Here's a pass ahead. Turner gets it and double dribbled. She wanted to pass it to Albers and got defended. Did Skyler and she couldn't get it to her. Reese Gubo. She and Jaden Rose have become very acquainted this evening out that point guard position. Trap on the sideline, we're gonna get he just called an intentional foul, I think, on the elbow. I think. Let's wait. That is correct. Jayla Chappie and trying to keep the basketball away from Skyler Albers. Crossed in front of her, hit her in the face with an elbow, and that's an automatic call. Even though it was intention unintentional, that's an automatic call. This is going to be two shots and the ball for Skyler Albers. Skyler's a 77% free throw shooter on the season. But that goes off the back of the rim. 14 points in the game for her, including 10 in the opening quarter. 
see what she does with this. Wright State University Lake Campus free throw. That one also is hard, but it'll be Redskin ball out of bounds on the sideline. And it also is the fourth foul on Jayla Shappy, who was a starter this evening and has played a lot of minutes. She made a three ball back in the opening quarter. That's her only basket. She's been very aggressive defensively this evening and would be a difficult loss. Here she is. And this is Addison Shappy matched up out front. Here's a trap. Randui tried to get around Sherman. Sherman's going to get called for the block. That's Kate's first foul. Stuck that leg out, and that was the call, trying to keep him going up the sideline. Each team now has five team fouls. If our scoreboard is correct, as Avery Randui will take the basketball out of bounds. Here's Sherman. Kate picks up the loose ball, goes to the rim. Little shot goes. Kate Sherman, first basket of the second half, cuts the lead to one. She's got 10 in the game. Albers pressured on the wing. And Rose ends up on top, and coach says, back it out. Rose looking, finally finds a teammate. Pass inside from Mesher to, to Brandewey. That was a well-executed play. Got him spread out, got the ball inside, and Avery Brandewey has four points on the game on a nice pass from Mesher. Here's the zone again. Here's a three by Borchers out of the corner that's long, and Avery Brandewey rebounded that one. Pass inside, Brandon, we wants to spin inside, goes up with the left hand, it's a little hard, and Sherman rebounds. What looked like a really nice move, and it just wouldn't fall for her. Coach putting him into a set here against the zone. It's like a one-two-two -two match out of the zone right now. Borchers passes it inside to Poling. Her shot's hard off the glass. And Mesher scrambles for the rebound. What do we got? Foul or held ball? I think we're going to get a foul call. Bishop's had a little conference. The foul goes to Poling. That's just her first. But sixth team foul on the board, so it'll be one of ones after this one for the Redskins. Back in the game. Jayla Shappy with her four fouls. And they put the team foul up on the wrong side of the scoreboard. So I am not sure exactly where we stand on those, that situation. And we'll have to watch as we get a little bit farther into this one. Here's Brandewey working. Pass goes into the middle and it's tipped loose. Who hit it? It will stay at this end of the floor. Avery Brandaway looking for a teammate and finally finds Jaden Rose on top. Here comes the trap. Hoyne gets it. Rose finally finds Turner. Turner's trying to get to the rim. She gets cut off by two players and traveled. Drugger pivot foot trying to get stopped against good defensive pressure. Back into the game will be Addison Chappie. Back into the game will be Skylar Albers. And I think we're going to have a discussion with the scores table on how many team fouls each team has. And they have now corrected it. Rushi has six. Fort Army has five. And again, a moment ago, they had it up on the scoreboard just backwards of that. So we got that corrected. Good piece of officiating. Pass inside. Sherman is going to go off glass and it rolled out. She had a chance for a three-point play that would have tied it. Instead, she'll go to the free throw line. And that will be foul number five on Avery Brandewi. Or not. The scoreboard still says four. So... I'm going to tell you, my score sheet is incorrect this evening, and Sherman's first free throw is short. 
And no wonder Coach was so confident leaving her the game because I had my scorebook wrong. She just got replaced, did Avery Brandewey, with her four fouls by Victoria Mesher. Here's Sherman's free throw. That one is good. That's point 11 for her. It cuts the lead to two. Here's Mesher working against Borchers and it's tipped out of bounds by CC. Finally got that last point up on the scoreboard. But Remigan had to ask for it to be corrected. It was, and it is now at 38-36. Here's the trap. And Summer Hoying was standing on the sideline when she caught the ball. So here comes back into the game, Addison Chappie. Also back into the game will be Avery Brandewee. And the scoreboard has flipped over, so each team has six team fouls. So uh, we're going to go with that one right now. Being the next foul by either team is a free throw opportunity. Sherman wants the ball. Good defensive play by Albers, who hit it. Albers bounced it off the leg of Borchers. Nice defensive play by Skyler Albers. 5'10", junior. Coach Siegel's team, 18-1 on the season. They have just one senior in the starting lineup and three total seniors on their roster today. So good things coming in the future, too. Mesher loses the ball. Three ball, long. Rebound, Chappie. She lost it, but Sherman gets it. Borchers gets that short one. That's hard. Sherman gets that rebound, but she gets called for going through the back to get the rebound. Kate Sherman's second foul will send Fort Lauderdale to the free throw line for a one and one with a minute and 38 to go in this one. Carissa Meyer will go to the line. She is one for two there today. And she has a total of eight points. One and one, Carissa Meyer. Sherman rebounds. The team needs a basket to tie, a three to take the lead. Gubo, handoff, Borchers inside, short jumper. That one will go for Borchers. Four points for her, and we're tied at 38. And Sherman's going to jump out on the heads and get called for a foul. Kate Sherman got there just a shade late and trying to turn the corner and get to the rim was Victoria Mesher, who gets to go to the free throw line. Victoria has not scored this evening. She has done a lot of other things well tonight. She is a 72% free throw shooter on the season and missed it. Rushi with a chance to take the lead with a minute to go. Gubo, handoff, Borcher, same play that ran a moment ago, but this time better defended. And Jade Rose gets called for going across Reese Gubo's hand. That will be the second foul on Jaden Rose, but more importantly, will send Reese Gubo to the free throw line. She shoots 69% from the season there. She has not been there yet this evening. And this is a chance to put her team ahead. Did so. 10 points for her. Her team's up one. Reese Gubo, five, six senior. She averages eight a game. She's got 10. Make it 11 and a two point lead. Albers, pass, Mesher to the rim, left handed. No, Sherman rebounds. Gubo's got it. Coach Bremigan yelling timeout, and there he got it. Kind of a noisy gym right now, and uh, 
A little bit difficult for our officiating crew to hear, but with 37.2 seconds to go and a two-point lead, we get a timeout that goes by the way of the Rushi Raiders. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewers supported TV4 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing in this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click donate. So with a two-point lead and the basketball, and any foul will put Fort Laramie at the free throw line. In the basketball game this evening, they are 12 of 17 from the free throw line. And the inbounder will be C.C. Borger. Borger. They're trying to double up Gubo, and she slips into the backcourt and gets the ball. See if they pressure and how long before they foul. Here's Borchers, pass to the corner. Chappie will be fouled. To the free throw line will go Addison Chappie. For a one and one opportunity. She has missed her only free throw opportunity there this evening. But not that one. If my stat page is correct on the season, that is Addison Chappie's first free throw made of the season, and it puts her team up three. And Fort Laramie will take that timeout. This is season 18 of the Sports Report. It continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kammerer for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around. You can see that Friday night at 10 o'clock on WTLW. Big week for us. Friday night, this game will air, of course. And if you're watching this one, at 10 p.m. on WOSM, we have Shawnee at Ottawa Glandorf. And at 11 p.m. on WTLW, Toledo Central Catholic will be at Lima Senior. Lima Senior upset Whitmer on Tuesday night. Toledo Central Catholic is a half game behind Whitmer in the standings. And then multiple games that will air on Saturday and Sunday, including a bunch of basketball games that will be at Ottawa Glandorf on Saturday in their winter classic that you'll want to catch when those games re-air over the weekend. Here's Addison Shappy. This is a huge free throw to put it up two possessions. 5-10 Sophomore. And rebound to Albers. Down by three. Here's Turner. Pass inside. Brandon, we run the lane. Scores. In a well-executed fast break, they got Brandewe going down the middle. She scored points five and six for her, and with 19.3 seconds left in the game, her coach calls a timeout. I think each team has one remaining, although the scoreboard's been a little tardy in getting those up on the scoreboard right now. And it's a 41-40 lead for the Arushi Raiders, and they will have the basketball out of bounds with 19.3 seconds to go. And we'll have to inbound the basketball under pressure, and most likely if they are able to do so successfully, have to make a couple free throws. If you're looking at a game reset, each team has committed eight fouls, therefore still one and ones for both teams. The scoreboard says each team has one timeout. I believe that they've now got that correct. And if you're looking at a possession arrow on any type of tie-up, it will go to the Fort Laramie Redskins. And let's see, you got CeCe Borchers windbound to basketball. She will be able to run the baseline. And let's see what they've come up with, with 19.3 remaining. Here's the inbounds. Goubeau's going to get it. Comes off a screen and will be fouled. 16.6 to go. Reese Goubeau will head to the free throw line. She made two just a moment ago. And she's going to get a one and one opportunity right now. Back into the game comes Jayla Shappy. She has a four fouls in the basketball game and 
Here's Goubeau, 11 points in the game for her. And her teammate left early. Poling so anxious to go for the offensive rebound, she left early. It's a one-point lead. For Army, trying to keep that SCAL winning streak alive. Here's the inbounds. Here's Rose, and she's going to take a timeout. 12.8 seconds to go in the basketball game. We're going to take a break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Claire and Cedar Gymnasium. Army Redskins have the basketball out of bounds right in front of their bench. They have called their final timeout of the basketball game. The Rushi Raiders still have one left. <laughs> and let's see how the defenders are like going to play some zone. Maybe not. Let's see how this goes. They wanted to lob the mesh or couldn't. Here's Brandewig working the lane, and she lost the basketball. We're going to get a foul that will go against Sherman. Kate Sherman will pick up foul number four with 9.7 seconds to go. The free throw line will go Avery Brandewig, who was a 78% free throw shooter on the season. And we're getting a couple of subs into the basketball game. It's a one and one opportunity. Brandon Wee has not been to the free throw line this evening. She has six points. And it's hard. Track down the corner, Borchers. And she gets pushed out of bounds. That will be the 10th team foul. So this is going to be a double bonus situation anyway with 6.5 to go. To the free throw line, CC Borchers. She made a pair of free throws back in the second quarter. And this is double bonus time. Splash. Two point lead. Coach Bremen is going to take a timeout. This, this will be the final timeout, in, at least in regulation, with 6.5 seconds to go. And boy, he's in that tough situation that we discuss all the time. If she makes this one and you're up three, do you foul or don't you with 6.5 to go? And of course, how are we going to defend it if we're up just two? So we'll take a look at that one as we come out of this one, see how this one's going to be. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. I suppose we could talk about tournament a little bit at this particular point. Rushi was a D4 number two seed. They go to Sydney, and uh, they will play on the 11th against Triad. Fort Laramie's got a couple of regular season games left. They will also be in Sydney, but in a different bracket. And on the 11th, they will play Fairlawn. Well, here's a free throw and a huge one. Borchers with one. Dead center, three point lead. Here comes Mesher. They need a three. Mesher looks, looks. Here's the three. Turner gets it off. It's long. Well, this is one of those type of basketball games where you can say both teams are the winner. Reason being, the Rushi Raiders win this particular game 43-40. That will take them to an 18-4 record, 10-2 in the SCAL. But the Fort Laramie Redskins, they will win the conference with a record of 11-1, but it does end 
their consecutive win streak in the conference. They will still be conference champion for the sixth consecutive year, but were unable tonight to do so with an undefeated record for the fifth consecutive year. 40 points tonight for the uh, Fort Laramie Redskins. They've been averaging 51 and a half on the season. They were led in scoring by Skylar Albers with 14. Carissa Meyer had eight, six for Avery Brandaway, six for Ava Turner. On the other side, this is a team that put 43 on the board tonight. The Rushi Raiders averaging 50.8 points per game on the season. They had 43 this evening. They were led in scoring tonight. 11 points from Reese uh, Gobeau, 11 points from Kate Sherman, nine big points from Ronnie Poling, and then six points, four big free throws, including two at the late in the basketball game for CC Borchers. We want to thank the people who put this all together for us this evening. That would be Amber Cadania, the athletic director here. Had some conversation with her this week and met me at the door and got us all set up this evening. And we want to thank our crew tonight. Megan Sherrick and Kelsey Beimer did the work here in the gym. And Megan will take this back to the station and edit it for you to view. Once again, Fort Laramie comes up a little short this evening. The Rushi Raiders with a 43-40 win. to go to 18-4 and 10-2 in the SCAL. You can watch high school basketball at WOL.